We're gonna go ahead and put these in the oven at about a, I was gonna say 100 degrees. I'm not gonna cook it. We're gonna get them in there at room temperature and see what those mothers can do. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Dan Giusti. And today I'm being challenged to cook three delicious and unique dishes using potatoes. More particularly, the Idaho potato. I had the opportunity to spend most of my career traveling around the world working at some really cool restaurants, cooking with some pretty crazy ingredients. These days I spend most of my time trying to figure out ways to make delicious food on a budget, and that's what we're gonna do today. We'll be using the humble potato today to make three unique dishes for less than $3 a plate. Because of the neutral flavor of potatoes, they're super versatile. Using a variety of techniques, you can get them into all kinds of different dishes that you would never expect. Unfortunately, I feel like they're typically reserved for just like a couple different things in people's homes. It's like baked potatoes or roasted potatoes and mashed potatoes. And there's no reason for that because they're actually really simple to work with and we're gonna be doing some pretty cool stuff today. Not only are potatoes inexpensive, but they're also a great base to showcase other flavors. Russet potatoes are high starch, low moisture potatoes, which makes them perfect for frying and baking. The nature of these potatoes lends really well to the three dishes we're gonna be making today. And with that, let's get started with breakfast. A roasty is basically a large potato pancake made with grated potatoes. Our version is going to be big. It's gonna be crispy on the outside and very tender in the inside. We're gonna top it with some pretty classic garnishes of sour cream and a lot of caramelized onions. This is a great example of making the potato the star of the dish. So we are using a five pound bag of potatoes for this one roshi. I know five pounds of potato seems like a ton. You'll see how quickly the amount of potato shrinks down. We're gonna be using a box grater. I'm gonna be using this side here. The smaller the piece, the more dense this cake is gonna be, and that's why I've chosen the uh, smaller side here. By grating the potato finely, you're really transforming this whole potato into something entirely different. You will see straight away when you're grating these potatoes how much moisture is in them. And these are low moisture potatoes. We're gonna wring out the moisture from these potatoes, so I have a clean towel here, a clean dish towel. We have our pan ready. This, this whole thing comes together quick. So, real simple thing here. Already, without even squeezing it, I'm not even squeezing it, you see how much moisture is coming out. It's crazy. By squeezing out all the excess moisture, you end up getting this kind of like homogenous texture of the potato throughout, and you wouldn't get that if you kept all this moisture in. So we're just gonna go ahead and open this up. You'll see it, it holds. It holds the shape. We're gonna add a bit of oil, and we're gonna start to put this in here. So as I'm packing these potatoes in, just keep in mind that this was five pounds of potatoes. You can see how much it shrank. So I'm packing them in. We wanna make this, this nice, dense texture. If I put salt into these potatoes, it will draw out more moisture. We don't really wanna to continue to draw moisture out, so we're just gonna stick with it for now. We will season it after the fact. We will take care of that, do not worry. So once this is in here, it can be a little kind of tricky or what worry you to determine like, how do I know if this is like cooking too much on the bottom or not enough? You can start to see the edges are nice and caramelized and brown. You should probably focus too when you're showing the camera things to not put your arm directly over the flame as it will start to burn the hairs off your arm. It stinks, you smell that? That's horrible. So I think we're pretty good to go ahead and flip this. Really easy way to do it. We got a 10 inch skillet here. We got two 10 inch dinner plates. Do one of these, get the other plate. The old flip a here, no problem. I'm gonna put some more olive oil in here and we're gonna slide this thing back in. About 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes on this other side. I think we're there. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and just slide this off onto our tray with a rack. We're gonna finish it in the oven. We have an oven set at 350 degrees. We're gonna pop this in until the internal temperature of the potato cake reaches 200 degrees. All right, while our roasty potato is finishing in the oven, we're gonna get going with the caramelized onions. Really simple process. While we cut the onions, we're gonna get the pan going. We wanna start cooking the onions in a nice hot pan. So that's going. So we're gonna go ahead and just kind of slice these thinly. So we got our oil. You can do this in butter if you would like. So we're gonna add our onions. We got a nice sizzle going. Also using a big pan. So we have one layer of onions here. 
What's difficult in this process, just let it be for a second. Anytime you're trying to caramelize something, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be touching it all the time. At some point, you gotta just let it be on the heat. So you can see we're getting some really nice caramelization on here, but we wanna take them much further than this. This stuff here getting stuck on the bottom of the pan, over time, as we let these onions cook more, that's gonna burn. We want that in our onions, and we don't want it burnt. So we're gonna add a touch of water. It's kinda of like cleaning the pan, but we're keeping this flavor in there. Probably another 10 minutes or so on the stove, and we're gonna get this really rich, deep brown color on the onions. All right, so the onions are ready. They've really garnered this deep brown color. I'm gonna turn the heat off. I'm gonna let these cool down a little bit, and we're gonna go check on our roasting. All right. Oh, this thing. You'll feel that five pounds of potatoes when you're carrying this thing out of the oven. It is time to cut and garnish our roasty potato. We're gonna put a little salt on here. While the roast is still nice and warm, the salt will kind of stick. So a little bit of salt. We have our caramelized onions. And then I'm just going to kind of spread them out. I'm trying to cover the whole thing. Now you can do this however you want. I'm just gonna put like spoons of it kind of around. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the chives here. This is like a fresh onion flavor uh, versus now the, the Caramelized onions, a very different kind of deeper flavor. Just sprinkle these on pretty liberally here. So I am really excited to get into this. It's been a bit of a process, but it looks awesome. First thing you'll realize when you get into it, it's, it is like this dense cake that we keep talking about. Crispy bottom, super crispy. Mm. Wow, this thing is no joke. Uh, I said this was for four portions. This could probably feed like eight people for breakfast, to be completely honest with you. It is dense, super satisfying. Sour cream does its job, kind of cuts through all this. It's acidic, it's cool. And there you have it, four portions of roasty potato with caramelized onions and sour cream for $7.57, coming out to $1.89 a portion. This is the perfect start to your day. All right, it is lunchtime, and for lunch we're gonna be serving baked potatoes topped with a niçoise inspired tuna salad. A niçoise salad usually includes tuna, potatoes, olives, and a variety of other vegetables. This is a good example of using the potato as a canvas. So to get started, we're gonna go ahead and throw these two potatoes in about a 350 degree oven, let them bake until they're soft. As they bake, we're gonna get the rest of the dish ready to go. We have a few things to do, one of which is to clean our green beans. So when you go to the store, you're gonna get green beans like this. It has a stem on it. So, real easy, you don't need a knife for anything, you just take, the, take this off and snap it right off, comes off easily, that's it. Other than the baked potatoes, this is the only other ingredient that we have to cook today for our salad. We're going to blanch and shock the beans, which means, very simply, we're gonna add the beans to boiling salted water, and when they're cooked, we're gonna add them into this ice water. So we've got our water, it's not salted, we're gonna salt it. Now, ideally, you have enough water here that when we put these in, this doesn't really lose the boil, okay? You don't want a tiny pot. We want this to cook. It might take three minutes. It might take five. There's a very discernible difference between a raw green bean and a cooked green bean. You can just take one out and take a bite out of it, and you can tell it doesn't taste much difference from the raw version. Cook it a little bit more. All right, so we'll give it a check. Take one of these. There's still a crunch to it, which is nice, but it's like a different crunch. It's like a juicy crunch. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these out. So adding the green beans directly into the ice water stops the cooking immediately and also maintains the vibrant green color of the green bean. All right, so we're gonna prepare the rest of our vegetables. Uh, we'll start with our sun-dried tomatoes. Just gonna add our tomatoes into our big bowl here that we're gonna use to mix everything. So we're gonna use about half an onion. We're not using the whole thing. We're gonna move on to our green beans. So they are cooked, but we wanna cut them just a little bit just to make them more manageable when we eat it. We will move on to our radishes. These are beautiful. The greens on these are beautiful and they are delicious. So we're actually gonna keep the greens. I'm just gonna put them to the side. We're just gonna cut these in half so they're stable. And then I'm just gonna slice them thin. This is super delicious as it is, but don't feel like you need to use the vegetables that I use today. You can use whatever you have in the fridge or whatever's in season. It's a very versatile dish. So we have our radish tops, our radish greens. Not much that needs to be done here. If they're clean, you're good to go. I'm just gonna give them like a quick once through chop so they're not like huge pieces. That's about it. All right, celery, also gonna cut it on the bias. Why? Because it looks good. Just go right through like that. 
Parsley is gonna be a real simple one here. Just as it is, I'm going through the whole thing, stems and all. So I'm not gonna use all this basil. Basil's strong. I think I'll actually just pick these into larger pieces like this. All right, we're gonna prepare the tuna and we are using some solid white albacore canned tuna. So that just implies that they are kind of bigger pieces. That's what we want. We have one tablespoon of olive oil, a couple tablespoons of mayonnaise. And I like doing that even when I make a regular tuna salad. I like to kind of cut the mayonnaise and add a bit of uh, olive oil to it. Just makes it a bit lighter. I enjoy that. We're gonna go ahead and add some salt and pepper to this. When you're seasoning the tuna as well, just remember that in most cases there is salt in these cans as well. So the tuna is already kind of seasoned. We're gonna do our best to maintain the chunks of the tuna. So we're all set here. I'm gonna go grab the potatoes out of the oven. They've been in there for about 40 minutes or so, so they should be all set. All right, so our potatoes are done. I've let these cool off for about 10 minutes. We don't wanna like get into them when they're screaming hot. So these are like room temperature at this point. So we're gonna go ahead and dress our vegetables. So we have olive oil and vinegar here. You can dress it with something else if you prefer. We have some red wine vinegar, just a preference of mine. Bit of salt, little black pepper. So these are room temperature right now. For a portion of this, it's gonna be a half potato proportion. So now we're kind of like cutting these wedges, a little salt. If this is one of those dishes that this initial plating doesn't need to look beautiful because we have this amazing salad to go in over top. Getting some good height on this. All right, so there you have it. This beautiful, at least to me, looking dish of baked potato topped with a Niçoise inspired tuna salad, all for $11.61, which comes out to $2.90 a portion. All right, let's dig in. This thing is looking beautiful. Mm. The vegetables and the herbs give this like amazing freshness. And then it's like potato tuna, super substantial serving, great for lunch. All right, it's dinner time, and for dinner we're making gnocchi with butternut squash, brown butter, and sage. So what's a gnocchi? It's the Italian word for basically like a potato dumpling. Growing up in a big Italian family, a gnocchi was something that we got to enjoy relatively often, so I'm excited to show you how to make it today. So we have four pounds of potatoes here. We are using russet potatoes again. Russet potatoes are low in moisture, which are perfect for the gnocchi because that's the name of the game here. We want the flesh of the potato to be as dry as possible to make a fluffy gnocchi. So starting with a low moisture potato, baking it versus boiling the potato, these are all things that are gonna promote them to be drier. So I'm gonna go ahead and bake these in an oven at about 350 degrees for 45 minutes. So while our potatoes are baking, we're gonna go ahead and prep the butternut squash. So we have a whole butternut squash here and we're gonna go ahead and cut the squash in half lengthwise. We've got seeds and some other stuff in here that we're just gonna take out face down on a tray. So we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and roast the squash flesh side down. This way the skin protects the flesh. So as it cooks, it's gonna get nice and tender. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it into an oven. You can put it in the same oven that we're cooking the potatoes. Probably gonna take 30 to 40 minutes depending on the squash. All right, so our butternut squash is ready to go. Nice and tender, you can see that it's cooked. These are still warm to the touch. Oh, they look beautiful. You can do this a variety of ways. If you wanted to cut it, you could cut it. I'm just taking a regular old spoon and I'm gonna kind of just scoop it. And I think you'll see that because of the way we cooked it, it comes out in these beautiful little shapes. And now they don't all need to look exactly like that, but we wanna treat this with a little respect. When we go to cook the gnocchi, we're keeping these just like that. So we're done scooping our butternut squash. It is time to grab the potatoes out of the oven. They've been in there for about 40 minutes or so, so they should be all set. All right, so our potatoes are looking good, smelling good. Love the smell of a baked potato. Uh, with this knife, I'm gonna go ahead and open them up. Why am I opening them up? Because they're hot, because any steam inside, if it stays inside, will create a little more moisture. So by allowing the steam to escape, but we're continuing down this path of making the flesh of the potato as dry as we can. We have eggs, we're gonna be adding egg yolks. So we're gonna say it's about one egg yolk per pound of uncooked potato. So we started with four pounds of potatoes. We're gonna go ahead and separate out four egg yolks. Eggs are separated. Our potatoes have cooled off just enough. With a spoon, we're gonna take the flesh out and we're gonna put it into this sieve. 
So we're gonna just start pushing this through. All right, so last bit going through here. It's time to make the dough. When you make this dough, ideally, you'd have some kind of large space that you can do it in. Uh, I'm gonna put some flour down. I have approximately a quarter cup of flour per pound of uncooked potato. So that's kind of how we're looking at the ratios here to be prepared. You go ahead and just kind of pour this out. Our eggs, I'm just gonna kind of break them up a bit. So I'm gonna kind of pour it around, spread it out a bit. And now I have our flour. So I'm gonna put basically all of it, 90% of it, and keep the rest here. We might need it, we might not. So this is what's called a bench scraper. I think it's great for making a gnocchi. We're kind of, you would say, cutting it in, kind of mixing it without really mixing it, without too much motion. Now, we're not gonna knead it like, like go at it like you would with, a, with like a conventional dough. And at some point you just gotta call it because you don't wanna keep working this and working this. That's gonna take away from its fluffiness. So I think we're pretty much here where we need to be. I'm gonna cut off a small piece here. I'm feeling good about where we're at now. We're gonna keep the shaping of these very simple today. I just actually like the way gnocchi looks when it's just like this. It looks nice and beautiful. And we are ready to boil these uh, little dumplings. All right, so our water's already boiling. We're gonna add a bit of salt, as you would just like when you're cooking pasta. You need to have boiling water. If this water is not boiling, these gnocchi could really start sticking together. You're gonna have a big problem on your hands. Now, when you put them in, it's a real easy indication as to when they're done. They'll start to float to the top. All right, so all the gnocchi has floated to the top, but before I take them out, I'm gonna put a bit of olive oil on my, uh, my pan here. So I have a pan lined with parchment paper. Put a little olive oil on just so they don't stick. That's really important. We got our oil on here. We're just gonna kind of give them a little shake just to make sure they're not sticking. And we're set. It's time to saute these gnocchi up. We've got everything ready to go. We've got a hot pan. The sauce really here is brown butter. Okay, so we're gonna add some butter in here. We really wanna develop flavor, so we're gonna let it get nice and brown. All right, so the butter's starting to brown. It's pretty noticeable. It starts to become tan in color. Start to smell it as well. I'm gonna add the sage. Sage is gonna pop a little bit. It's essentially the moisture kind of frying out of the sage. We're gonna go ahead and add our gnocchi, one portion worth. Yes. Oh yeah, that's nice. You can really smell it. This is one of those things, if you're used to brown butter and you know what it smells like, you smell it one time, you know it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some squash. You'll notice I keep moving the pan. I'm moving the pan just to ensure nothing's sticking. I'm not too worried about it. A little salt, a little pepper. All right, so I'm gonna add a touch of water to this as to create a little bit of a sauce. So by adding the water to the butter, combined with the fact that some starch is coming out of the gnocchi, everything comes together and emulsifies and creates a sauce. All right, so our gnocchi's got some nice color on it. We are ready to plate. So using a spoon, try to get the sauce, everything in here at once. Last thing to do, bit of cheese, and I might put a bit of black pepper, but this looks great. And there you have it. We have one serving of a gnocchi with butternut squash, brown butter, and sage for $2.17, which comes out to $8.68 for four portions. You get this sweetness from the squash, the Parmesan cheese, the savoriness from that, and the black pepper. This is like a big time winner. So there you have it. Three meals where we transform the humble potato into affordable and unique dishes that will be sure to impress your friends. Next time you have a few potatoes lying around, just remember you can turn them into so much more using the techniques that you learned today.